Hi, welcome back to Book Chats from Lonsdale Public Library. Um, so this week you get me Marguerite, obviously. Um, so next week we're going to have a guest chat from Susan. Um, and then you'll get one more penny, one more me, and then we're going on summer hiatus because summer reading program is coming up. Very exciting. If you are a child or know a child, uh, send them down here. It starts June 7th and we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, but today, I am not talking about kids' books for once. I'm talking about serious grown-up books. They happen to be graphic novels. Now, I love graphic novels. I love a superhero book. Talk to me about the X-Men sometime. Um, but in this case, the ones we're talking about are actual, you know, real meaty literary books that happen to be graphic novels. So we're going to start with Fun Home, a family tragic comic. By Alison Bechdel. Uh, you may have heard of the Bechdel test. She's the one who created that um, in her seminal comic series Dykes to Watch Out For, which started back in the 80s. Um, and But this book, um, which is a multiple award winner, it's from 2006, and it's about Bechdel's relationship with her father, which was, it was a difficult relationship. He was an English teacher and director of the town's funeral home, which is where the name comes from. They called it the fun home. Um, and he was distant and difficult. Um, and it wasn't until college when Allison came out to her family, um, as a lesbian, obviously, Dex, watch out for, um, that she found out that her father was gay and that he had been sort of living a double life all this time. And um, a few weeks later, he died in what she concludes was probably a suicide. So it's, you know, there's a lot of gritty stuff. It deals with her obsessive compulsive disorder and, you know, the complicated dynamics in her family. Um, and she tells it in a really literary sort of nonlinear way. She'll go back to a story with a new perspective. Um, and it's really, it's a, it's a very good book. Um, I should have shown you some of the illustrations. It's, beautifully, very realistically illustrated. So I highly recommend it. Um, and then we're going to talk about another heavy biographical book, but another great one, uh, Persepolis by Marjane Sa Satrapy. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Um, and it was originally published in two volumes. This is the complete Persepolis. Um, it tells about her youth in Iran and then later in Europe. So Satrapi, she, she grew up in Tehran, uh, where she lived through the overthrow of the Shah and the rise of the, um, the triumph of the Islamic Revolution, and, the, and then the devastating effects of the war with Iraq. So a lot of like big historical things were happening during her childhood. Um, and she was a child of, um, her family was actually quite well off, and yet they were Marxists, go figure. Uh, but very sort of westernized, very educated. And so her family life, her the private life she lived, was very different than the public life they had to live under the Islamists. Um, and so she, it was really, a, you know, a tough adjustment, a, a difficult time period. So they sent her to Vienna to study as a teen. Um, and she had trouble fitting in there, too, and had, you know, sort of the typical struggles of adolescence and also being an outsider ended up going back to Iran, but continued to have that tension of loving her home, but not loving sort of what's become of it. Um, so it's, uh, as one reviewer called it, intensely personal, profoundly political, and wholly original. So it's a, a very important story, and she's got these um, black and white illustrations that are surprisingly powerful. Another great one. Um, and then I'm going to recommend They Called Us Enemy by George Takei, which is another book that deals with some important historical events. Uh, you may know George Takei from Star Trek, of course. And then in recent years, he's become something of uh, just a, a celebrity for being George Takei. Um, and he's got a great personality and, and he's a fun guy. Uh, but this is a, a pretty 
serious book, you know, in 1942, as you may well know, President Roosevelt ordered uh, basically all Americans of Japanese descent into concentration camps. Um, and, you know, whether or not they were citizens, whether or not they were born here, um, like George Takei was born here, as were his parents. Uh, so 110,000 Americans of Japanese descent um, lived for years in these camps. And so it's the story of him as a little boy growing up and going through sort of your regular childhood dramas, but all behind barbed wire and in this very um, limited space. Um, so, you know, so it deals with the big historical picture, but it also tells this personal story. So it's it's an important story, um, and it's very well told. And again, beautiful illustrations. Um, that's, you know, that's one of the great things about graphic novels is I think that they can really bring home the, the experience. They really put you in a place and time in a way that, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, and sometimes it really is. So that's another great one. Um, and then, can't we talk about something more pleasant by Roz Chast? Uh, if you're a reader of The New Yorker, you certainly are familiar with Roz Chast. She's been um, doing comics for them for a long, long time. <clears throat> and this is a bigger book, obviously. It's about um, dealing with aging parents. And it's got, you know, sort of her, her classic, her charming illustration style, her dry, dry wit, uh, but also very serious issues. You know, her um, father, who was a very anxious person who relied on his mother, who was kind of overbearing, which um, you'll, you'll see that dynamic if you're, if you're a fan of Frost Chast. You have probably seen that dynamic in her comics over the years. Um, and so it's... God, there's universal themes of, uh, you know, when adult children have to step into the parental role and how, how challenging that can be and the, you know, making the decision to move your parents out of their home, dealing with, um, you know, those um, uncomfortable physical realities of your parent changing and, and being forced sometimes into a really intimate um, relationship, which can be hard to deal with. Uh, but so anyone, anyone who has dealt with the loss of an elderly parent or dealt with the difficulties of aging parents um, can really relate to this. It's got all the, all the things you expect to see. It's got tenderness and pain. It's got tears and laughter. Very well done. And finally, uh, a book that we just got in called Kent State for Dead in Ohio by Durf Backdurf. Um, and that is not his original first name, but apparently people called him Durf, and so that's what he goes by. And who am I to argue? Um, but so, again, another historical event that you probably have heard of, you know, that on May 4th, 1970, the Ohio National Guard gun... Ooh, sorry, I got emotional about it. Uh, gunned down unarmed college students protesting the Vietnam War. And in fact, I learned... Um, from this book that half of the people who got shot were not involved in the protest at all. They were just going about their lives going to class because they never canceled classes during all this. Um, but four students were killed, nine wounded. And um, Backdorf really did his research. He did a lot of interviews with people. He looked at all of the available archives. And so it really goes into sort of the four days leading up to it. And it tells the story of those four students who were killed, and then there was only one National Guardsman who talked to him anonymously, or who, who put their um, story on the record. And so you also get some of the perspective of these young kids who were also under a lot of pressure. You know, most of the Guardsmen were not, um, they were just young people, you know, doing their best too. And it was a time when the country was very split, when it really felt, you know, a lot of people thought that things were going to heck in a handbasket, which may sound familiar to some of us these days. 
Um, so it's it's a very it's a moving story. It's a, a very troubling story, you know, because this is a thing that really happened in our country. Um, and again, you know, got the illustrations that uh, really put you there. So it's pretty, it's an emotional thing to read, um, but I feel like I learned a lot from it and uh, enjoyed it, even though it was not exactly feel good. So hopefully um, these are some suggestions if you want to really, you know, get into some graphic novels that go in depth into things. So hopefully you'll enjoy them and we will see you next week.